Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, welcome back to still even more Adobe Illustrator variable data stuff. Specifically in this video we're going to be showing how to um, put multiple data sets up on your artboard. Um, for those of you who don't know what this is really about, this is a follow-up to my previous video where I showed how to use the variable importer script to easily um, use the variable data feature in Illustrator. So I'm not going to be going over exactly how to do every feature of that particular script again. So if you're not familiar with that, go back, check my last video, and get up to speed on that first. Now, in this video, we're going to be um, taking this single version of uh, my superhero cards from the last video and we're gonna step that out so we're gonna take this file and turn it into this so if you look down here in the bottom here's my variables palette what this does this is a finished file we're gonna create this file so now if I click through here to these different data sets you'll see that everything is imported already and then I could go and export these single files and have them sent to the printer so um, what we're gonna do is go back so we gotta take this and turn it into that this isn't particularly quick so there's some patience involved but uh, there's some moving parts to this tutorial and, and how to set this up but the advantage is it's going to save you time down the line. You may have to invest a little time to set it up first, but uh, it'll be worth it. So be prepared to <laughs> have a little bit of patience with me as we walk through this. So um, after the first video and using the, the script that uh, Vasily made, um, I asked him to come up with a, a way for me to do this on on multiple data sets on the sheet so I could go faster and he came up with another script so the basics of this right now are going to be to number one download and install this rename art from text script that he made we're gonna get that we're gonna install it number two we're gonna take our graphics and we're gonna step those out set up multiple instances of the variables now there's some considerations to take take into account which I'll show you then we're going to create the text files the renaming text files that are going to be used by the script that we download so I'll show you how to make those in Excel we'll probably have to use another text editor to save those so I'm saying there's some moving parts in this um, so then we have to rename our variable objects using the script in Illustrator to get prepared for our final uh, imports we have to get our CSV file ready to go. If you saw the last tutorial, there's a way that we prepared that CSV file. Well, now we have to take that and do it a different way for this. So we'll show how to set that up, and then finally we will import and we'll have that final file that I showed you. So first things first, we gotta go get that rename art from text script. So I'm gonna go to Chrome. I'll put the link for this in the description of the video so as you can see up here this is where this is at it's on github and um, either you can type that in or I'll put this link in the, in the description of the YouTube video but for now so here's our variable importer that we would have used last time this is the script that we need rename art from text so to get this file if you're not familiar with github to get this file we're gonna click on this it's going to take me inside of it. Now, initially, I would copy this and try to paste it, so don't do that. That's what I did the first time. It screwed up. What we got to do is click this raw button. So you got to click raw. It's just going to dump that raw text out into the browser for you. And then you can see here it is here. File, save page as. And this is Chrome, so if you're using Explorer or something else, you just have to go to the file menu and save. And look up here this is trying to help me 
by adding this text extension. I don't need that. That's actually going to screw it up for me. It needs to be a JavaScript JSX file. So make sure there's no extra extension showing when you save this. I'm going to delete that. Sometimes, especially on the Mac, it might hide that text extension when you save it to the Finder. So you don't know what's going on. And you're thinking, oh, this is wrong. Something's wrong with it. But the final text extension is hidden. And that's why it doesn't work. You have to actually get info to get that to see it and delete it. But for now, it's deleted. Where it goes, look where it's going. I mean, my Illustrator, I'm going to go into Presets, My Language, and finally in Scripts. And actually, I already have it, so I'm not going to save it again. But that's where you save it to. Make sure it's a JSX file. I'm going to click Cancel where you would click Save. Now we should be done here. If you already have Illustrator open, you're going to have to quit and then reopen Illustrator. And once you do, it'll load that script for you and it'll be available in this Scripts menu. See, here it is right here for me. So just make sure you have that ready to go. And okay, with that done, it's time to move on to step two. Let's set up our graphics. So what we've got here is that same superhero card file from my last tutorial. So remember, each one of these is going to be a variable. I've got a name, and it's my number, and I've got a couple of things, this team name, the publisher that these comic people are coming from, and then here's an image. So we can see that reflected over here in my layers panel. Now the thing with this is I'm going to go ahead and step this out. So I'm going to hit the return key. It's going to bring up my move. And I believe I have to do 2.75 on this. Copy. Command D is going to keep on repeating that. All right. So now I've got five of these up, which is fine. So what I need to do is name these variables correctly for when I import. What I'm going to do over here in the Layers panel, turn those off. OK. So here's where we got to learn how Illustrator creates a file that could be a problem for us. So let's start with Publisher. I got that selected. Let's click over here in my Layers panel. All right, so move over a little bit. OK, so here's my Publisher. Actually, I'll move this file over. This is selected. Let's back up a little bit. There we go. All right, so we can see this is selected. This here in the sub layer, it's not a sub layer, it's actually on this layer. If you never open these disclosure triangles, opening this disclosure triangle shows these objects. These are objects on the page. So when Illustrator creates a new object, it puts it on top of the old object. So clicking this one, you can see this is on top. This one over here on the right is all the way on the top. So that makes sense. I mean, if you put down a piece of paper and you put another one down, it's on top of that and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, that doesn't work for us because we want it to be the other way. So I want it to be so that this one over here at the left is also on the top. And that's going to work better for us when we have to rename all of these. So the easy way to do that is I can just select these. Let me move this over a little bit more, this layers panel. I can select these. And then I can tell Illustrator to reverse order. And it may look like nothing's changed, but now I click on this, and now that one's at the top. So that's what I want. And this one is at the bottom. OK, and it just works better when we have sequential numbers to start at the top and go down from the bottom, which you'll see that that makes sense later. So let's open this up even more. All right. So now I've got these teen. They don't have to be selected on the artboard. You just have to select them in here in order to reverse the order. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse all these. And I've got these in separate layers. The layers themselves don't matter. But it becomes important when you have many, many variables on, a, on one artboard. Like I've done files where. I have 50 or 60 or sometimes more of a variable up on the artboard, and it can get unwieldy pretty quick. 
So it's easy to just sort these and just maybe lock one layer or lock most layers and, and just have one unlocked. So I can just quickly grab all that stuff. The variable importer itself doesn't care what layer that these things are. Neither does the rename or script. So just to make sure, let me just click on this. All right, so that's at the top. That's at the bottom. All right, now another thing that I want to show you that I ended up having a problem with, let's do it with the number, that might make it easier. So I can rename these objects. Right now, this object is not named. This is just a preview of what's showing on the artboard. And if I were to take this and change it to two, we can see now it says two. It's just showing me the preview of what's on the page. I'll undo that. Now why that matters is because if you're using variable importer and you choose to bind your variables by the name, it won't work if, you're, if your object is not named. And right now these aren't named. They look like they're named. That's where you can end up having a problem saying, oh, it doesn't work. So you can click in here and I can rename that to something myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can rename it to something myself, but you probably don't want to do that if you've got, again, 50 or 60 variables. So that's why the script comes in handy. All right. So we've got everything reversed now. And that's going to make it easier for us to use our script. But first, we have to actually create our renaming text files. So what we're going to do is jump to Excel and I'll show you a way to do that um, fairly quickly depending on how many variables you have. So let me just go over to, actually I'm using NeoOffice, let's back out of here. I'm using NeoOffice, you're probably using Excel or OpenOffice or something. They should be very similar. Let me just get back to, uh, oops, that one, and I think I've got to get here. There we go. All right. So here's my old file. And these are the variables I'm going to want to use. These top um, header texts are going to be the, the name of the variables. So I'll just copy those. And let's see if I can get back over here. All right. So, all right. What I want to do, I'll delete this at image. For those of you who remember the last variable data. Um, tutorial that at Im that at symbol denotes that this is an image column so I don't need it for my variables so what I'm gonna do is actually take these drag them down my bad I need to put a number first sorry guys all right so let's let's try that again so we'll take these drag them down now it's created the numbers numbered variables that I'm going to need or the numbered uh, text that I'm going to need for my files so all, what I'm going to do is create separate text files for all of these and again I know this seems like a lot of crazy work that you're doing but it can really pay off especially if you have a lot of repeat work it can really pay off so what I'm going to do is just name these that's my image one. Let's go back here. Let's grab publisher. And let's put this in here. Publisher. I'll just call it that. And it seems like overkill for just five, five of these at a time, I know, but probably most of you are going to be dealing with a lot more than that. Right, we got two more to go. Now I've tried just saving up the text file from NeoOffice. Maybe it's just NeoOffice, but for whatever reason, those type of text files don't work. There must be something wrong with the encoding or something that I'm not aware of. So I've always found it always works if I just go to a, a dedicated text editor like Text Wrangler. If you're on Windows, you can probably use Notepad++ or something. All right, so let's save this as number. Okay, now I got five 
separate text files. Okay, team name, and each one has one through five of whatever it is, name one through five, team one through five. All right, now, back in Illustrator, it's time to actually rename our objects. So what I'm gonna do, I'll start with Publisher. I'm gonna select all these. You see, this is why I went and made these layers. Now it's easier for me to just grab these specific objects. And I'm gonna go to File, Scripts, Rename Art from Text. And here are the files that I just made. This is Publisher, so I'm gonna open that up. It's reporting that it's done with five names. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but you kind of need to refresh this layers palette before it actually shows anything. So I'll just hide that. And now you can see it's publisher one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we needed. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with each one of these. Let's do teams, file, scripts, rename art from text. And there's team. Okay, let's just, that worked. We have to do our numbers. Okay, we're looking good. Time for names. Looks good. Bring that in. We can verify that's done. Finally, we have to do our images. Now, if you look here, you'll see it says done with six names instead of five. But there's really only five there. If we look back into our image file, that's only because you can see there's six lines here. That's because there's a carriage return here. There's a paragraph return. That's all it is. If you freak out, if you see, wait a minute, that's not the number of variables that I had. That's all it is. It's harmless, but you can get worried if you see it the first time. So I wouldn't worry about it. I just left that in there just so you could see that. Anyway, these are all done. And at this point, we have to go and format the actual data. I'm gonna save this. Format the actual um, CSV file that needs to be imported using the variable data importer. Okay, back to Excel or NeoOffice in my case. All right, the thing with this, if you saw the last tutorial, this is set up correctly to import just one one object on the artboard. Now unfortunately, we have to change this. So this is going vertically. Really, it has to go horizontally in order to work for multiple setup. So let's show that. I'm gonna just copy all of these. Let's start up a new one. All right, actually, I'm just gonna put this down here actually for the first time. Now what we gotta do is take these for the headers. Let me just take these over here. And really I could have grabbed those other ones I made, which I think I will do. Yeah, so let's grab those. All right, what we have to do is line these up, stretching across the top of the first row. So I'm just gonna keep cutting these. That screwed up. Just pretend you didn't see me do that. I'm supposed to be a professional here. But anyway, what we have to do is cut this and this is NeoOffice, but I'm sure the same thing is available in Excel. I'm gonna to go to Edit, Paste Special, and I'm gonna make sure Transpose is on. This is called the same thing in Excel, and I think there's actually a button for it in Excel. 
but when I transpose it, it's going to flip that column into a row. All right, now they're stretched all the way out across instead of down. And that's the way these have to go. So what we can do is take this, cut it, do the same thing, paste, transpose. But what you'll notice is I've got number one, two, three, four, five. Then it goes to name. So really, I need these to wrap underneath here. And a quick way to understand this is however many variables you have on your artboard, I've got five, that's how many columns you gotta have. So if you have 60 variables up, you gotta have 60 columns in your spreadsheet. You gotta have a, a renaming text file with 60 variable items in it. And that's that's really the best way to, to remember what has to be done. So if I look over here, um, what I've gotta do, I can either take this, keep going over here, cutting that, then I don't have to transpose anymore since it's already transposed, I'll just paste. But another way you can do this is I can take this. For those of you with carpal tunnel like me, it might be better to just do this instead of keep scrolling over horizontally. I found if I do something like this, so then I take this and I transpose it. It seems to line up correctly, five, six, seven, 10, 11. So that seems to work, but I think most people will probably do it the other way. So what we'll do, copy, I'm gonna transpose now. All right, now it's stretching out. Let's just take this down a little bit so it might be not so far to go. All right, let's get back here. So I've got name one, two, three, four, five. I gotta take these guys, copy. So I'm just gonna go through all these so you guys understand what this entails to set up this file. Now I wish there was some way, if there's any Excel gurus out there, um, wouldn't it be great if I could take this file or take this column of data, cut that, now, you would think that I could just select these cells and tell Excel I need to paste in here and have it just wrap from line to line. I can't figure out any way to do that. That would be great. If anyone knows that, let me know. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep doing this. Transpose. So I'll go ahead and grab these. Oops. Now again, I know this seems like a lot of work and it seems like it's kind of uh, a little bit haphazard, but once you get the workflow of it down and you have some template files and that repeat work keeps coming in, you're already set. You've already done this work. So I would urge you to go through it one time, assuming you're still with me. <laughs> I may have lost some people already, but. Hopefully not. All right, let's keep moving on this. And if you're wondering, I mean, I've only got five per variable now, but sometimes when I've had 60, 100 variables, that um, Excel file, it stretches out forever. And I really don't care how long it stretches out horizontally. The computer can handle it. It's just, it may seem kind of weird if you've got a thousand columns in your, uh, in your Excel file, don't worry about it. Variable importer can handle it, the computer can handle it. It just, it just looks odd when it stretches on to infinity off to the side. We're kind of conditioned to not want that. So let's transpose. This is gonna be our last bit of magic here. Let's grab that. Okay. So for those of you who saw the last tutorial, this is my image. Um, 
my image row or image uh, columns here, I need to actually go back and add my at symbol. So the variable importer knows that this is um, an image column. Okay, so that should be good. Now this is this is what you should end up with when you're done. You should have all of your variables stretching out across the top, and then the um, the specific instances of the variables will show underneath, kind of wrapped under. Let's go ahead and save this somewhere. Ooh, there. And I'll just call it two, multiple two. So that's my NeoOffice file, but I have to save this as a CSV. So file, save as, because the variable importer is only going to understand a CSV file. Text CSV. Okay, so let's save that. Make sure it's UTF-8. The rest of this should be fine. Okay, so now it's a CSV. Now all we should have to do is come back in here and import. I'm gonna unlock my layers so that it can do that. The file has to be saved before it can import. And it's time to make it happen, time for the magic of the variable importer. I'm gonna select the CSV that I just made Okay, I'm gonna get a little preview here of all of my variable column headers. You can kind of tell if something's wrong, if nothing comes in. Okay, now it's showing me here that this is an image. It knows this is an image because I put that at symbol at the beginning. What I could do here, I could click here to find the path for that image and it'll just fill that in for me. But I'm not gonna do that here because I'd have to do it for each one. I can do that for everything if I click up here to this hamburger menu get to a second set and I can just click this button for all images and here's where my placed images are so then I'm gonna go back and it's filled that in for everything and I'm not gonna mess with any of this stuff here I do in the last video so if you didn't see that go back and see it but here this is important to bind by name we went through the steps to change the names of all those objects so make sure you choose bind by name otherwise you had to match all those up by hand in the variables palette all right so that's all we need now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and it's gonna tell me all right it's done 25 variable names and five records okay it looks like nothing happened but here's our first row. And when I click through, the same as the original file that we saw, we're now done. That's really all there is. So if I got more, more data in this same format, I've already got this file set up now. So I can just plunk it into that CSV and the template's already made. Or even better, if you can somehow offload that work back onto your client and say, hey, I need your I need your CSV file to be formatted like this. And by the time that they give it to you, it's even less work, you're already done. You just go ahead and plug it in. So again, I, I really hope there's still someone here. Is anyone still there? <laughs> I, know, I know it was kind of roundabout and sorry for that, but uh, it has the moving parts to it, but um, it's I think it's worth putting in the work. And again, I've done some files that you know 60 70 variables some over a hundred variables but it works and when you get that CSV file that's already formatted you're good to go and at this point I'm not going to go over exporting I did that in the last video but what you could export all these all these uh, data sets using an action if you don't know how to do that make sure to go back check out that last video and you can see exactly how to set up an action and kind of automate automate exporting all of these to separate files that you could then send to the printer and for those of you who might need 
extra scripting or if you if you need to do something else I know Vasily is available for further work and I believe I did put his uh, there is his um, contact info the best way to contact Vasily is on LinkedIn I would go over there and uh, see if he's available for hire usually he's available I've I've uh, already brought him to a couple clients I was working with so that they could kind of customize the variable importer and tailor it a little bit to more to what they do so if you have a client that could use that um, you should look into that because it's worth a little bit of money spent up front at least in my case uh, than to uh, keep spending time down the line and wasting money but anyway that should be it for now I, I really hope this helps somebody and I really hope that uh, this made sense if not make sure to leave me a comment I'll try to help you. These YouTube comments sometimes can be iffy for me. I'll, I'll try to keep checking back, but every once in a while I might miss one. Uh, if, if I do, try to go over to my site and send me an email for my contact form there. Those I always get. So aside from that, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.